So you guys have different uh, training centers. Yeah. So how how do you build those partnerships with these with these facilities then? What's the most important thing? Um I think for me it was just having the confidence to just actually go and approach them. Mm. So a lot of the times we would just go on sort of Google and Google sort of Asheter facilities near me. Yeah. And logs will come up and there, there's, a, there's a couple of websites that actually get everyone in the list for you. And I would, we would just go to the venue and we would just turn up and see if someone were there to speak to. And nine times out of 10, the person you see isn't the person you've got to speak to, but they at least know the person you're supposed to be speaking to and they can, they can pass your details on. So mm. we would just go and we would just explain, explain what it is that we, we do because a lot of the people sometimes they still just don't understand the the individual industry. Mm -hmm. We would have to go and we would try and explain and say, "Look, we're going to have one person working. We don't even need a full third of the pitch. We only yeah. need a half of a third of an eleven aside." But mm -hmm. if you go to a facility owner or you try and do that inquiry online, they just they make no sense of it. So yeah. just having confidence to, to turn up and just just ask the question and sort of explain what it is that you actually do. Um, mm. And we would, we would also, another thing that we did in the early stages is if we noticed, say, a team was training on the field and say they were only using a half of the field that they had booked out, mm -hmm. go to the organiser of that, that, that team and just say, if we paid you X amount, mm -hmm. could we just sort of, Sub, sublet that bit of bit of turf off you really for that hour. Yeah. And a lot of these community clubs, they they they're happy because they get a little bit of extra money, and maybe they shouldn't really be doing it at a private facility. But that's mm. that was one workaround that we 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 managed to managed to do. Um, but yeah, it's just going and speaking to them and explaining to and trying to find the right facilities that actually understand you. Um, mm -hmm. There's been countless amount of wasted hours spent traveling to facilities, then it's just been a no. But then yeah. you just move on to the next one, and, and they are out there. Like I said, we've mm -hmm. sort of done it eight times over now. So, and we've had facilities that we've we've come away from. So, sort of done it more than ten times now, and it it it, it does work. Just going and just speaking to them and just seeing what what is it that they can do. Perfect. Yeah. So something that. A lot of coaches always ask us in our program is is exactly that. Like I've gone to the facility, they've said no. What do I do next? So I'm sure when you guys first started, you got a lot of rejection. Oh yeah. So how do you, how did you handle that, and what how do you continue going? I think for us, it's we just have this this massive desire to to have this this company that actually puts on professional provision and, and really is valuable to, to every athlete that comes in. And that's just, that's just an image in our head that no matter what obstacle gets thrown our way, we're going to achieve it. So if, if someone says no, it's almost just a little speed bump in the road. We'll just find, we'll, we'll go to another one and we'll just keep doing that. And that's the same with any rejection, you know, even if it's, a rejection of a, of a client, let's say, that doesn't doesn't actually take us up after their inquiry. It's like, fine, right, next one. And it, it's just sort of having that mentality. And I think the reason we have that mentality is because we do have that that hunger and desire to have something greater than than 